Today we will be discussing the two experiments that led to the breaking of the genetic code. The first will be the Nuremberg and Mathe experiment, and the second will be the Nuremberg and Letter experiment. In 1961, Nuremberg and Mathe came up with an experiment where the main goal was to build a cell-free system that would build amino acids into proteins. To accomplish this, they ruptured E. coli bacteria cells, which released the contents of the cytoplasm. They added specific RNA in order to control the protein they synthesized. The RNA used was synthesized outside the bacteria and then added into the E. coli system. Next, the researchers filled 20 test tubes, each with a different amino acid. 19 of these tubes were cold and one was hot. The hot means that it is radioactively tagged, which allowed the amino acid to be tracked. For each round of the experiment, the hot amino acid varied. This variation allowed them to see which amino acid would be changed into a protein. Finally, it was determined that the encoded amino acid had to be poly-U. After a specific round of experiments, it was seen that a chain of repeated uracil bases produced a protein chain that was made of a repeating amino acid, phenylalanine. Poly-U codes for polyphenylalanine, which makes it consistent with the UUU coding for phenylalanine. The original goal of this experiment was to produce an RNA with only one kind of base. What the experiment did show was a series of uracils code for phenylalanine. This experiment allowed the first codon to be deciphered and began the breaking of the genetic code. In 1964, Nuremberg and Letter created an experiment that led to the breaking of the entire genetic code. Compared to the previous experiment in 1961, which used homopolymers, a polymer where every monomer in the chain is the same, this current experiment had all the codons be made in vitro. They could not use the same methods as the 1991 experiment because it was hard to figure out which specific codon paired with the amino acid. In 1961, they only used codons with all similar base nucleotides. We're now we're trying to figure out what happens when you either switch around or replace a nucleotide. They used three nucleotide artificial RNA sequences in cell-free systems. These fragments allowed a ribosome to bind to the tRNA that was complementary to the one codon being tested. The official mRNA codons were mixed with ribosomes and tRNAs, one being radioactive, just like in the 1961 experiment. For each round of the experiment, they would label one type of amino acid and put the mixture through the filter. This is where the radioactivity comes into play. The filter allowed unbound tRNAs to pass through, but prevented the ribosomes with bound triplets to move. The leftover ribosome and codon were then tested for radioactivity. If there was any found, the cor corresponding amino acid was added. By repeating this process, Letter and Nuremberg were able to decipher the entire genetic code.